Hi everybody, it's Geordie from Geordie's Cards. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am creating this cute little congratulation card for a graduate. And on the inside, I've put a little gift card holder so that your grad can get some money or a gift card because that's what they want really, isn't it? So the products I used are the Lawn Fawn's Henry ABCs, the Lawn Fawn Wild View stamp set, the Smart Cookie stamp set for the cap and the um, diploma. This was the free gift with purchase from the last release, I think it was. I think it's called You're Great. And then the Love Poems stamp set, which I'm just going to use for one of the little sentiments. So I started out by taking a stitched rectangle, and which I cut out of um, Bristol Smooth cardstock. And I'm just using some purple tape to mask off the edges where the stitching detail is. So once that was all done, I took some just distress ink in peacock feathers, um, mermaid lagoon and cracked pistachio. And I'm gonna create a bit of a background. So I'm just gonna start with my darkest color, which is the mermaid lagoon. And I'm gonna go into the top with that one. And these are distress inks. They're not the oxides that I normally use. Um, I, I like both. I prefer the oxides because they're easier to blend. I think the Distress inks are a little bit trickier to blend nicely, but they do um, if you give, give a little bit of work to it. Um, yeah, the Distress oxides are just a little bit quicker and I think um, they give probably a, a thicker look, I suppose, a chalkier look. Um, so it depends what you like. I, I, I like the look of both, but I just find the Distress Oxides a lot easier to blend. But anyway, these, these work fine, and I'm just going in back and forth um, over the blend lines with the different colors. This cracked pistachio ink pad was really, really dry, so I had a lot of trouble getting any color out of it, and I really had to work at it. But I got there eventually, um, just kept blending, kept adding a little bit more on, um, you can probably tell I don't use these very often. I do tend to go for my Distress Oxides, but I do like the little inks every now and then. And I just thought this color combination was quite nice and it worked quite nicely with um, the mood board for the Lord and Fornatics Challenge, which has kind of got some blues and some turquoise colors in it. So that was the idea behind these colors. So once I had my colors on there the way I wanted, I took just some plain water on a paintbrush and splattered that about. And then I'm going to use a paper towel just to dry that off. And once that's done, I'm just going to go in with the darkest color, which was the Mermaid Lagoon, and smoosh a bit of that down on the mat. And then water that down and add some of those splatters all over. And I'm going to finish off with some white acrylic paint, which I'm again just going to smoosh a little bit onto the mat, water down and then splatter all over. So I was happy with that I just got to the fun part which is peeling off the edges and I love this kind of white border that you get if you mask off those little stitching details I just think it makes the whole thing pop and it just looks really really nice so after that I went ahead and stamped out my images on some transitite perfect coloring paper using lawn fawn jet black ink and I'm going in with my Copic markers. So I'm using E37 and E35 for the gu this little guy's mane. And I'm just adding the darker shade kind of right around the middle, around his face, and then blending out with the lighter color. And then I'll go back in with the darker color and add some flicks of color to create a kind of hair-like look. <laughs> At least that's what I'm going for.
So for his main body, I did YR23 and YR21, which are kind of yellowish, brownish tones, I guess I would say. Um, and I just thought fitting for the lion and also fitting again for the color scheme and the lawn fawn um, challenge, which is browns. I mean, the browns and the color scheme that they've put down are a lot darker than the ones I've used. Um, but I think I can get away with this. I think it's okay. So just adding some shadow and then going in with my lighter color to blend out. And then I'll go back in with a darker color to add a little bit more shadow um, just to create a little bit more contrast. And then just blend out slightly with the lighter tone again. And um, once that was done, I'll do his little tail. And I'm just gonna start with the lightest marker on his tail because it's such a small area. And then I'll just add in the shadow with the darker marker. And then for the tip of his tail, the little fluffy bit, I'm going back in with those E30 shades, so E35 and E37, to make it look the same color as the mane. So for his little nose, I'm using N8 and N6 to add a little bit of um, color there. It's a very, very tiny area, so just a dab of color. And I'm gonna use those same shades along with N4 for the graduation mortarboard, which um, I'm just gonna shade kind of towards the center with the darkest marker and then blend out towards the edges with the lightest. For the little diploma scroll, I'm using E40 and E41, which are just some very, very light brown shades, just to add a kind of dab of color um, to make it look a little bit less stark white and a little bit more kind of parchment-like, I suppose. That's a good description. And then I'm using B34 and B32 for the little ribbon and for the tassel on the mortarboard. And finally, I just went in with R20 to add some little cheeks to my lion. And then it was time for my white gel pen, uh, just to add some little highlight details to everything. So once all that was done, I did go ahead and fussy cut these out off camera. And I'm just gonna use my liquid glue to attach these little pieces together. So I'm obviously gonna put the little um, graduation cap on top of my lion. And then I am going to take a little craft knife and just cut kind of between his legs very, very carefully so that I can put my little scroll in there. So it looks like he's holding on to his diploma. Obviously he's graduated top of his class. <laughs> So once that was done, I took out my Henry's ABCs and I die cut these from some sunflower cardstock and used my Ground Espresso Distress Oxide just to um, add a little bit of contrast to the bottom of each letter. I did die cut these twice and then I glued them together. So there's a little bit of dimension. I didn't really need to um, ink blend on each set of letters, but I did. <laughs> there was no need to do that, but I did anyway. And now I'm just using my grid mat to help me try and um, line these up so that they're equally spaced. So I'm gonna have three rows of letters and it's gonna say con grr ats. So <laughs> I hope that makes sense. <laughs> um, I just thought it was kind of a little bit of a punny play on words um, for the fact that I had the little lion and lions, as we know, say grr. So that was the idea behind it. Um, so I'm just using my grid mat to help me space those out evenly as possible. And then I'm gonna use my liquid glue to adhere those down to my card base. So 
So I started in the center with each row and then worked my way out to right and then left. So I'm just finishing up the last letter there now. And then I'm going to attach my little lion and he is gonna sit right below the T in the center of the card at the bottom. So again, just using liquid glue for him. I didn't use any foam tape on this card at all. I kept it quite flat. Um, I just thought it had um, enough going on without needing anything extra. And it just had my liquid glue out, so I just decided to use that instead. So there we go. The front card panel is complete, almost. Um, I decided to add another little sentiment so I've got this little sentiment from the Love Poems stamp set, which says, you did it, woohoo. And I thought that went really well with what I was aiming for. So I took a piece of black cardstock and used my um, powder tool uh, just to rub all over that. And now I'm selectively masking off parts of my stamp. Um, so it's gonna be all in one row. Obviously it's all stacked up at the moment and I'm gonna just mask off each piece um, and then stamp it out. Now this is not a perfect way of doing it um, and you'll see why because it didn't matter how much I wiped off the, um, the excess that was left on the stamp after each go, I still got part of the sentiment um, there and excuse my head coming in just to make sure everything's lined up. Um, but it worked fine, I did just have to use a little paintbrush to get rid of any excess um, embossing powder that kind of stuck to the other parts um, and you'll see what I mean in a minute here when I actually get the embossing powder on there so I'm just scooping it up and tapping it off and you can see that there's embossing powder kind of all around it so um, that's just because of the rest of the sentiment that kind of it, it still kind of stamped a little bit if that makes sense but I'm just using a paintbrush to clean all that off and um, as long as you're very, very careful, you can kind of do that quite successfully. Um, I just wanted a little bit more embossing powder on the Y, and now I'm just kind of trying to clean it up as best as possible. And then once that's done, I'll just take my heat tool to it and heat it up to melt it. So once that was done, I took it to my paper trimmer and just trimmed it down. Now I made it really, really thin um, because I literally just want that little bit of sentiment on there. Um, I don't want it too wide because I want it to fit in between um, some rows of the letters that I've already got on my card. So just making it really, really thin, um, which <laughs> is easier said than done because yeah, it's quite hard to grapple with this tiny little bit of paper, but we got there in the end. And then I just again use liquid glue um, just to attach it down below the bit that says grr. So it just adds a little bit of extra to the sentiment. So it's going to say, Congrats, you did it. Woohoo! So for my card base, I decided to take this Blue Jay cardstock from Lawn Fawn because I like the way it made everything pop. It's a bit of a dark blue color and it just kind of helps everything else stand out and I did do a side folding card base a, a standard sized um, five and a half by four and a quarter and I'm just gluing that down so there's a fine little um, kind of sixteenth of an inch border all the way around and I just like the way that looks um, obviously because the cardstock is so dark I needed to put a white panel inside so you can write your message and I decided to do a little bit of extra stamping. So this is where this kind of uh, You Are Great stamp set comes in. I'm not 100% sure of the name of it, um, but it was the freebie. And I'm using the little lion in the corner. He's holding the um, flower in his mouth and the sentiment that says, you're the best or you are the best. And then underneath it says, I'm not lying, which I just thought was really, really cute. So I stamped that out with my Versafine Onyx Black ink a couple of times and then I attached the panel to the inside of the card just to finish it off. So the last thing I did was take this diagonal gift 
card pocket from Lawn Fawn, that's a mouthful. And I just cut it from some of the um, Into the Woods Remix paper, which is this kind of orange stripe. And I just thought it kind of tied in nicely. And I'm just adding that to the front inside of the card because I just think grads always want a gift card or some money. <laughs> And that's it, card complete. I hope you enjoyed it today. Please do give it a thumbs up if you did. Please feel free to leave a comment and please do subscribe to my channel. I'd love to see you back. Thanks for joining me.